Boom, stop, I'm Dave Matian, PhD, and in this video I answer the question, what does a mature relationship look like? Welcome to Man Up episode, I can't remember, but you'll see it. Masculinity for the intelligent man. I'm David Tien, PhD, and this is Man Up! Welcome to the DT PhD podcast. This is um, episode, should be around episode six. I'm not sure. I am doing something for the first time. I've uh, never even attempted this before. And we are simultaneously on a podcast, on a man up episode, and filming a vlog. So for the guys out watching me on the video, I got AirPods on as our little Bluetooth microphones here because I have also have a lapel mic for the, the video. So um, hello on YouTube, hello on iTunes, hello wherever we're hosting this. And um, let's get into it. There's a question here. Actually, this is a Man Up episode um, first because we're going to release this on Man Up first and then it will come out as a podcast later. I'm not getting distracted by looking at the sound waves there. <clears throat> and this is... Um, this, this is an, a, a post that I made that was, let's see, originally on Harry Connick Jr.'s show. And it was uh, Christian Bell's um, re uh, relating about her husband, Dax Shepard's rules for arguments. And I thought it was a really nice thing to, to, to see. It's a very short clip of like two minutes. So um, you can see it in the Facebook group, um, the Man Up Facebook group where I posted it. It will also post it in the DTPHD podcast group. So you can refer to it. And I posted it as a, a great short example of what it's like to be a mature masculine man in a relationship from her perspective. And I just sort of shared, I shared it sort of like just a nice thing to look at. And um, oh, by the way, we're also at a live event. This is the final day of the final weekend of the Total Transformation Program, which has been uh, ongoing uh, for seven years, since 2010. Um, and uh, so this is the, the final hour. Actually, we're coming up to the final hour of uh, Total Transformation. Never thought that would uh, happen, but it has the longest running single program in uh, dating skills that I know of. Um, and it's a live program here in, in Singapore. So thank you guys for being here. All right, cool. Yeah, give yourselves a hand too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got three mics here as well, so I hope there's not too much interference. And anyway, going back to the question, it is very pertinent to what we've been discussing this entire weekend, and we're exploring the nature of relationships here. And so I, I posted this as a really cool thing to, to look at, and, and I just I assumed that people would, the guys would look at it and say, oh, that's really nice. But actually, it got really polarized reactions, which is what um, caused me to, to know that, well, I knew that I'd be out of that, that I need to make this episode. So um, if you haven't seen it, I'm just going to run it. I'm just going to summarize it for you very quickly. So Christian Bell, um, the normal way that she dealt with arguments was she said that she would uh, slam the door. Um, when she gets really mad, she'd, she'd walk out of the house and she'd slam the door um, of their bedroom, wherever they're arguing, then slam the front door of the house, then get into the car and screech out of the driveway and go around the corner, um, screeching her tires and then park around the corner and then stew. And I, I guess after that, she'd calm down and then eventually make it her way back in the house and whatever, get, get on with life. And that was her way of dealing with the conflict of basically running and getting space and so on. And um, the, the husband, Dax, uh, decide, told her that that was not acceptable anymore, which is a good move because that is that's not going to be any way to uh, grow in a relationship if you just keep running from conflict and not resolving it. And if you run right in the moment, if you leave this situation right in the moment in which you're, mostly, you're most emotionally triggered, then you will never heal and you will never mature and the problem will not really be resolved. Because, uh, there are sane, rational people who think it's better to take your time and cool down. But if you're going to do that, and it's fine to do that, but then you need to communicate that I'll be back in five minutes or there's some bounded time and this is the time that you need to sort of just check out and take care of your and you'll be back at X time. So then the person knows to just wait around for that time. But if you just leave, what will happen is normally it will trigger the, the, uh, the reflex in the partner. It'll trigger the reaction in the partner because that will bring up the trauma of abandonment and so on. So anyway, so this is a good move. So Dax had the wherewithal and the self-awareness to say to her that this is not going to work in their relationship and that she can't leave the house now. And she's like, what? Um, and a lot of guys who saw this clip saw this as a play between masculine and feminine energies. And um, I'm in another 
Facebook group uh, for uh, research purposes, and it's a, another man's group. And it was originally po it was also posted there, and the discussion there was about what a man that a, a masculine man who leads should be. So they're they're really focused on leading. And then the younger guys, because the younger guys are more going to be generally more liberal, um, asked, well, why is it the man who has to lead? And then I actually got that same question in the Man Up group, and that's what prompted me to, to create this episode for, for, for him, for Yannick. <clears throat> and um, before I get to that, though, it's really important to point out that a lot of guys think this is a, this is a problem between a man and a masculine and feminine. That the masculine thing is to lay down the law, lay down the rules, this is the way it is. Like that in itself is supposedly sexy. Um, and that, that can be sexy. There's no doubt that leading and being dominant is, is as a, coming from a masculine figure is something that a, a, fem, a feminine energy would find attractive. Um, but that's not what's happening. That's not that shouldn't be the lesson that you take from this, because um, if you just lay down rules as a way to turn on your wife, <laughs> you could be laying down some really bad rules, right, for no reason but just to turn her on. Like, just laying down Nazi rules are really stupid, right? So let's, let's, pay, let's be a little bit more mature and pay attention to the rules that were being laid down. And basically, he just told her how to have a better argument, how to have a, a better communication in a relationship, how to be a more mature human being. You don't run whenever you're just angry and then stew and then think, I've won the argument because you've stewed. And that's a valid point. So she learned to, uh, to not run. So she'd make it out to the front door and then wait. And then after she was able to deal with um, not leaving the house, then he said, you can't even leave the bedroom. So then she dealt with that. And she, so instead of leaving the bedroom, she's like, okay. Because he said, if you do this, then, then I can't stay in this relationship. And... Um, so that was like sort of the, that was a lot of guys caught on to that and thinking that's the, what a man should do. He should lay down ultimatums and rules. That's the manly leadership. Um, and that's, that's not just in, its, in and of itself the lesson. It shouldn't be that in and of itself laying down rules and ultimatums is attractive or, or even positive in a relationship. Okay, so um, it's not, hopefully the lesson you take from this isn't a masculine feminine lesson. It's, it's instead a lesson about how to succeed in relationships and how to be mature. So, when, so then she can't leave the bedroom. And instead, she, she, so then she deals with that. And she, as she, to, to deal with the tension in her body and in her mind, because she can't release it by running and slamming things, she instead stews in the corner of the room and texts him nasty things. <laughs> but this is obviously, this, uh, hopefully you can see how that is um, a progression. She's matured. That's a better way of dealing with it than running from it and not continuing the conversation and possibly triggering um, abandonment reaction in, in the man. And so, so that's the summary of that. And along the way, I gave a little commentary. But the point of this is that a lot of guys saw this as a masculine feminine issue. And I'm here to say it's not, right? So uh, the comment that I'd like to point out in the Man Up group comes from Yannick. And this is the one I'm responding to primarily. He says, I have a bittersweet reaction to this video, probably because it reminds me so much of my previous relationship and what I failed to impose. What I find very interesting is the imbalance of power in the relationship. So he's really looking at power, right? So there's, it's a very in, so the insecure masculine reaction is to think about power, domination, laying down rules, laying down the law, laying down ultimatums. That's like the man's way of dealing with things. Um, or that's, what, that's their fantasy, to be like the dominant man. That's what they want to be. They think that's what a man should be. So he doesn't like this, Yannick. He doesn't like to be that way. Yannick seems to me like a, a kind of soft-hearted guy. And so, I, no, that's, I mean that, like a tender-hearted guy. So that's a good thing. He's like a, you know, he's a love bug or something like that. So he doesn't want to, all, obvious, he doesn't want to always have to be um, monitoring the power imbalances. And so he says, she complies because he refused to accept her drama. Now, that's not quite true. This is a misinterpretation or a misunderstanding of pickup artists. They think that drama happens because you're not strong enough. And if you were to just to say drama happens because you're not strong enough, that the reason why that might be true is because strong and drama have a lot of different meanings. And if you, ha if you understand the right meanings for those, that sentence might be true. But the way that's normally interpreted is... That, in that you got to lay down the law kind of way. And when drama happens, you got to punish it. So um, I know people, uh, guys who've learned game know that, uh, or have learned that they should uh, reward good behavior and punish bad behavior. And this is an example, they believe, of not, uh, of refusing to accept her drama and laying down the law. 
And he says, uh, she had to, so Yannick asked, uh, continues, she had to compromise because he wouldn't. She got trained and not the other way around, and she loved it. I've been raised, so, okay, so this is actually a great summary of the manly man's, I, I'll call it Joe Blow. Joe Blow's um, sort of like jock, bimbo, bro science interpretation of this short two-minute interview. And uh, that's understandable, by the way. So I'm trying to, I want it, Joe Blow, to be uh, derogatory, but I don't want it to be too derogatory. <laughs> I've been raised, he says, Yannick, to idealize women or at least treat them as equal partners. <clears throat> well, idealize women probably does, isn't a good thing. You shouldn't idealize anybody, but um, treating them as equal partners sounds like a good idea. I, I, you know, I hope we're not back in the 1800s uh, and, or earlier, right? So that sounds nice, equal partner. Um, the way I would want to be treated, but it, um, but it doesn't work that way. Now, it's, this bitterness comes out, and this is like sort of the red pill bitterness um, that, they, that they, you know, have to, um, they, they, they lose, they're, they're losing the evolutionary game to the females. And they don't like that. They want the females to be subjugated and subservient, where they, should, where they belong, they think. Um, but Yannick's not like that. He's, uh, he's evincing some of the bitterness, and if he followed that route, he'd end up in that sort of red pill bitterness. But um, he's not going there. He says, I, I felt bad about dominating. Um, he says, uh, the way, oh, he says, the way I would want to be treated uh, is the way he wants to treat his partner, but it doesn't work that way. I felt bad about dominating, and still do, I have to admit, because it got such a bad rap, and I saw firsthand how it destroyed my parents' relationship, but I'm getting more subtle now. <clears throat> that being said, I still have difficulty about the nuances. So he's misinterpreted, well, I guess there, there's no interpretation of the video, uh, but uh, he, he took the wrong lesson from it, uh, a bad lesson, um, which was that the, the way to be a man in a relationship is a dominating not dominant, but dominating man who lays down laws, uh, and they could be arbitrary rules. The, you know, the thing to pay attention is that that rule was not arbitrary, but he thinks that it's just about laying down the law, and she, he refused to compromise, so she had to. That's a horrible way to run a relationship. That will just basically run in, like, just the two of you, will, it's just going to create nuclear war in the relationship. No, this isn't a relationship. This is very unenlightened. And by the way, all the guys giving out this sort of advice, this sort of Joe Blow advice, have shit relationships or wives who are fine in a subservient relationship. And generally, those women who are, who are looking to be su subjugate themselves to the man are generally weak-willed women. And if you want that, well, you can still find that somewhere, but they're becoming fewer and fewer because um, who would choose, who wouldn't choose emancipation from, you know, slavery if you could have it? So there's some who would prefer to be in that position and they want to, and, and sometimes it's just because of religious beliefs and they believe that that's the role of, in their, in the family. So if when it comes to religion, maybe that's, that's an exception, but um, otherwise, I think it is a good thing to have women as equal partners in a, in a relationship. Okay, so then he goes on and says, um, that, be, that being said, I still have, okay, um, I can understand how women want to be led by a strong man, but at the same time, I don't want a baby that's passive and takes no responsibility. I agree. Who would want that? Uh, unless you're a weak man and you never want to be challenged. So there's, there are those people. And I don't think she'd want that either, especially on the long term. So on one hand, I'm supposed to lead, dominate, impose my will, and hold her accountable. Oh, God. <laughs> No, you took the wrong lesson. But I get it because a lot of the manosphere, I don't know, like men's development world, they, they're very simple-minded. It's very bro science. They're, they haven't done any real research. All, of their, all the psychology they know is social psych and evolutionary psych, which is all manipulative Machiavellian red and tooth and claw stuff with no good and evil or in it. So no morality in it. There's no goodness in it. There's no truth or justice or love in it. There's no room for love there. There's only room for power. So I get it, but that's the wrong uh, approach. Um, so then he goes, goes on. But on the other hand, I'm supposed to respect her need for independence, autonomy, and self-reliance. And I'm expected to magically know when to do what and to what extent. I still have a lot of work ahead. So Colin has responded, it's not an imbalance of power at all. And it's nothing to do with dominating. It's about setting boundaries and having them respected. He told her his boundaries and she chose to respect what he said or risk losing him. So that's better. Okay, so um, it is important to be able to communicate your boundaries. And, and that's a, an interesting point to note. Um, let me see if there's anything else from, he's replied a bunch of times here. And um, so 
Hartmut also replied, women expect the man to lead and be dominant. If you want genuine respect, that's the only way forward. Forget about the mainstream media, feminist teachings is toxic. I can understand why he's saying that, again, right? So they're taking the wrong lesson though. They're just they're, they're completely missing the point of why she would actually listen to what he said. Um, instead of him, they're just looking at it as, he laid down the law! And uh, it, it scares me because, um, I wonder how many of them have listened to any of the things that I have said in any of my Man Up videos or in any of the free courses because I clearly, if you understand the principles of what I've been teaching, you, you would not um, take this view that the position of the man is to, to just lay down the law and be dominant and be a, a tyrant. You're right. And um, so anyway, so um, Anthony Paul Johnson says this chick is a basket case. And so uh, and that goes down that that road. Um, and then there's this other one. Um, Sumo said he did manage to curb her drama. But isn't it better and more mature choice to go for better quality women right off the bat? And he makes a choice there. I mean, a good point there. Um, and uh, so let's get to it. What is the lesson to take away from this? Well, first of all, um, it is being human. OK, so this is. The progression of this transformation or like the lesson that she learned from the husband was that that's not the, the right way to succeed in a relationship. If you, this particular behavior, no one actually, uh, no one actually looked at the behavior that was there. They just looked at the enforcement of power, right? Which says a lot about where people's minds are instead of paying attention to the, to the deeper things. And um, what she had to learn was emotional regulation. And is it a good thing to be able to emotionally regulate? After all, that's one of the great benefits of meditation. Well, fuck yeah. I would hope that you can regulate your emotions. I hope you're self-aware enough to realize you're being triggered and you're set off and you're out of control and, and, and you're, gonna about, you're about to do something very childish and you can refrain from doing that even though it's really hard because that's your pattern for so long of slamming doors and knowing that when he pointed that out, she didn't say, no, intellectually, that's a bad idea. She, what did she do? She said, that's a good idea. That makes sense. That made a lot of sense because anybody who's intelligent would see, or wise, I should say, would see that that, it is, that does make sense. You, you want to um, not just slam the doors and walk off. And no one, none of the commenter, commenter, commenters really like mention that they're more like did he lay down the law and was he a, you know a tie, like a, was he dominant and that's why she was turned on um and i'm not sure if that's just because of the the group of people we have but so he, then we can see that she's matured because what it, the real difference is between maturity and immaturity how do you go from um having a mature reaction to uh, an immature reaction to becoming a mature person with a mature reaction. It's difficult. And first, the first step is to be self-aware enough to know that you're going into an immature pattern. But it's not like, like you just changed like that because if it was that easy, you would have done it already. No, but in the, no, it's not. It's, it's difficult because you're getting triggered. Very likely in Kirsten Bell's, Kristen Bell, is it Kirsten or Kristen? I'm not even sure her name. Kristen Bell's. In Kristen Bell's uh, childhood, very likely that was her reaction to um, disagreement in the family. Maybe she, she probably slammed the door of her bedroom and then slammed the door of her closet and then stewed in her closet. And then eventually dad would just, then the family just wouldn't deal with it and they swept the thing under the rug. And then they move on with their life. So their lives. And that's, that's how she was used to dealing with arguments. But um, that's not going to work anymore as an adult. But she's so used to doing that, that when the going gets tough, she reverts back to her childhood patterns. So it's very understandable. Now, how do you stop this from happening? By the way, this is also why you have approach anxiety. This is also why you go blank when you see a hot girl. This is, again, for the guys from the pickup world um, that I know I have a lot of, of following there. So I have to... So I'm making this more relevant to them, but I'm bringing it back to the podcast now, uh, which is that... It's a maturity issue, not a masculine feminine issue. Let's flip it around. Let's say the guy gets mad. Because if you think it's masculine to lay down the law and it's feminine for drama to happen, like Anthony Paul Johnson says she's a basket case, um, there's all these other guys saying it's drama. This isn't drama. This is human beings being human beings. This is human beings being immature. And you know, there's, here's the male version of what she did. Hulk, right? So he gets so angry, he throws something. Or actually, many men leave, right? They can't stand it. It's often the other way around. A woman wants to talk because women generally are more verbal anyway. And the man wants to not talk because he can't deal with the fight. So what does he do? He slams the door, slams the, 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 the car door or whatever, gets into the car, drives. And he usually would just drive. I know I have male friends who drive for 30 minutes just to cool down. Um, 
I wouldn't drive in anger, but okay, whatever. And I can see how that's just like soothing in a way and it calms them down and then they come back and they would prefer not to talk about it. But sometimes they're, they've calmed down enough they can talk about it. But if she says the wrong thing again or the thing that triggers him off, again, he's bang, he's out again. So whether it's a man or a woman who's taken off, the lesson's the same. It's don't take off in the heat of the argument. Stay as much as you can or just give a bounded time. Like I'm going to take off for five minutes. I'll be right back. Give me some space and you go cool off and come back. Not just an unbounded time because that's always going to be triggering all of our childhood abandonment issues because if you learn anything from attachment styles, science, you know that a secure attachment style can only come from knowing that the mom won't go away. But if the mom slams the door on the baby and takes off, the baby now thinks it's it, that's over, I'm dead. Then, well, that's the, that's the fear. That's why there's all that neediness happening in, uh, around the world. So it's, you know, so the security and anxiousness. And it's not, so it's not a masculine feminine thing. It's a maturity, immaturity thing. So it's not a man or woman thing. It's a maturity, immaturity thing. What is it? It's a maturity, immaturity thing. <laughs> and, um, and it shows a lot about people's maturity when they don't notice that. When they think it's a man versus woman, masculine versus feminine power struggle. So um, I just wanted to point out, what does it look like when someone starts off immature it, with an immature reaction from childhood, which is normal that we all have, to be easily triggered in special situations that remind us of uh, perceived trauma from our childhood? We look like that, like what Kristen did. And the male version of that is anger. So don't think that, you know, they can go into a rage. They can, get, they can get quite physical and violent. At least she just walked off and sat in the car, right? Dudes, I know dudes who can become much more dangerous when they have that feeling in them. And that is, that's masculine. That's a masculine reaction. Hers might be, you know, more feminine one might be screaming at him. Right? So, like, she had, we all, we all have different types of reflexes from our childhood and, and our coping strategies. She chose to leave, um, to move away. But many of us move towards and we beg and we plead and we cry and that sort of thing. That's drama too, but that's not, if you, it's, I guess everything is drama, the human drama. It's just immaturity. And you need to be patient and work through the, from immaturity to maturity. And it takes a more mature person to help you do that. So in this case, in this instance, in this situation, her husband was more mature than she was and he wasn't getting triggered and was in his, more in his executive true self to be able to point out to her what's happening so that she, has, she can have the room to grow. Now, again, flip it around. What if it's a man and the woman says, um, no, you can't leave this uh, house when we have a fight. Is that bad? Because it's, she's laying down the law? I fucking hope not. I fucking hope you're not a Neanderthal, Joe so bro science guy who thinks it's all of just about men dominating and that's what turns women on. So I hope you're smart enough that you listen to leadership where, from wherever it comes. And if she's saying the truth, whether it's the man or the woman saying the truth, I hope that we are in fucking the 21st century and we're not having to move the clock back to the 19th century. But I know that there are a lot of men in America who are trying to do that. So please, if that's you, I don't want you in the group. All right. There's, there are a million groups for you. And in fact, you guys run the country right now of America. So power to you. But um, hopefully... You can you see that there's another way to look at this, and maybe you're having a gestalt insight moment when you're seeing like, okay, it's not a man masculine feminine fight, it's a maturity immaturity fight, and this is an example of how you can lead your partner, whether you're the man or the woman, into a more mature reaction to your arguments, and that will always happen. So if you can't have moments like this in your marriage or in your relationship, your relationship will fail. Garen fucking teed. And how do I know all these guys with these bitter comments are going to have failed relationships and never experience real love for any length of time? Because they have these reactions, because they think it's a power struggle. They don't see that it's a maturity issue and it's about growth and healing and moving forward and um, helping the other person out of love to, as they're going into their rage, uh, for, because of their childhood issues or because of their childhood patterns to have the patience to lead them through to maturity. And this is also what your therapist will do. When you're in your therapist room, he needs to see these things. You tell him of these things and he needs to see you emote. And uh, you get, uh, we talked about emoting as quickly as you can to make the maximum use of the time there. And uh, being self-aware enough to know that you're feeling this, whether it's Hulk anger, because by the way, like the masculine, again, I just want to really hammer this home. The masculine thing to do here would have been to Hulk anger that shit, right? Like in what 
So in a, there's an enlightened masculine, which is the detached leader who, without emotion, is able to say these other things. But there's like, there's mature masculine and there's immature masculine. There's mature feminine and there's immature feminine, right? So what's the real factor that's, uh, that's changing here? Not masculine and feminine, because there's both mature masculine, there's both and mature feminine, it's, and immature masculine and immature feminine. It's the immature and the mature. Immaturity, immaturity. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can have different terms for this. So if you're uh, clini- like if you're a different type of psychologist, you might call this integrated and disintegrated. So if you're familiar with parts therapy or internal family systems therapy, that's a great way to think about it. That she had not yet integrated that wounded child in her that would act out in that way. And so the right way to, to integrate that is to, to heal that child that's acting so rageful. And... Um, because that's really a childish reaction. That's not a, if a real woman wanted to do some serious, if an adult wanted to do some serious damage, they do a lot more than that. That clearly, of the slamming of the doors is just a child in there who's wounded and got triggered again and got reminded of the thing that happened in her, in her childhood. So um, the right thing to do is to be mature and give the space and the patience and the time for this person to work through this and become, move closer towards the mature reaction. It's not a masculine feminine issue. Because right, you could have flipped it, and that woman, like Scarlett Johansson in The Hulk, yeah, right? She's like, it's get, the light's getting real low, or the sun's getting real low, and she's trying to calm them. That's what the fuck happened here! But it's flipped, right? The dude's just like, calm down. You can't leave. you got to calm down. you got to change from the Hulk back into a human being. We flip it around. So she, she actually did the masculine thing. She got fucking mad and got the fuck out of there. Right? So if you're a bro science Joe bro guy, that's what the fuck you do. No, it's not a masculine feminine thing. The Hulk and, the, and Scarlett Johansson would have been in the same roles, right? But it's just reversed. So um, it is a feminine thing to be a healer and to, 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 to be detached and to lead your child through uh, the pain and, and, the, and the anger. So it's not a masculine feminine thing. It's a maturity immaturity thing. So I probably have that thing home. I realize I have to really emphasize and repeat points for it to get in to people's minds. I can't, I'm so disappointed in myself that I, my message and my principles of relationships weren't clear enough that the guys in the comments would, would misinterpret this two-minute clip. So I wanted to clarify that. Thank you so much, guys, for the comments and for uh, ins- inspiring this episode. And uh, by the way, this is the DT PhD podcast. I'm speaking into this particular mic here. And uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the DT PhD podcast, you can do that. Uh, we got different versions on all the different platforms. So you can find it. Um, you can also find it on davidtmphd.com backslash DTPHD podcast. And then if you're on Man Up, um, I'm not sure which episode this is. This is going to go up pretty soon. So, um, but uh, subscribe to this because this is brand new. We got actually at the moment of this recording, we only have one episode up, but um, we'll be putting them up every week. And uh, we're also experimenting, experimenting with the vlog. So I got these babies in, and these are awesome. I wish I could make money off of promoting AirPods. Um, I love these so far. So um, unfortunately, these are not mine. These are um, my camera woman's. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to end the episode here. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. And it's David Tian signing out. Until I see you again, man up. And I'll see you in the next podcast.